So uh, my presentation title is uh, Cell Line Ontology Based uh, Standardization, Integration, and uh, Analysis of Linked Cell Lines. Uh, I'm from Michigan. So uh, some uh, brief outline. First, I will introduce what is ontology, and then I will say, okay, how we developed the uh, cell line ontology from scratch. Uh, it's some history. And then following that, I will talk about uh, how cell line ontology is now working together with the links, and uh, we eventually generate a cell line ontology subset for links cell lines and uh, use it for different applications. And then some future uh, research plan, and then followed with a final summary and the discussion. So, uh, what ontology uh, really uh, does for us? So, I think uh, ontology organizes things well. It's very simple. So, let's just do some uh, exercise. Now, we have uh, a box containing 1 to 49 numbers, 49 numbers, but missing two numbers, actually. And then the question is, like, uh, what are the two numbers, the two missing numbers? So if you just look at this uh, August, it's actually very hard to do, and it took me uh, many minutes to figure out. However, if we sort them and organize the data into a way like this, like, uh, you know, oh, you can, of course, uh, clearly show the 18 and the 42, the two numbers are missing. So the, yeah, the patterns, yeah, the sorting are different, but the the, the number, the size, those things are the same. So basically, what ontology does is uh, it does the same. It basically trying to organize those noising or missing or somehow disorganize data together so we can have a clear view and, and use it for different applications. So what really it is ontology? So uh, for the ontology, the onto, onto means the being. It is actually a very ancient term. It can go back to like uh, two thousand years ago, and for like Aristotle to uh, develop the first ontology to represent the substances. So in modern days, uh, now we say ontology is a representation of entities and the relations in a part of reality in computer and uh, human inter interpretable forms. So when we say Computer interpretable, we mean uh, we use the computer language like the OWL or OBO format so computer can recognize it. And uh, we say it's a human interpretable because uh, a human can read, can read the tags, can have an example, and can, we can see the labels in, you know, in the ontology. And then in the right side, uh, <coughs> there's a small trial, a uh, small trivial ontology. Uh, this uh, is uh, obtained from the CTSA ontology definition document. So let's see here, we have four drugs. All the four drugs uh, have the role of antidepressant, and they are also the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And then we have two persons, Jane Doe and uh, John Smith. So they are um, they are people, they are human beings. So here we see the two specific uh, people are instances and the human being is a class. So, the, so basically the gene is an instance of human. And then the instance also of human being have qualities. So we can have the female sex or male sex and then they are all uh, patient and they can uh, be described with different drugs. So this, in this trivial example, we can see uh, classes, instances, and the ether. Ether is a basic hierarchy st uh, structure uh, um, relation. So, so each drug is a drug. And then uh, we also have other relations like was prescribed. So we have more than ether. Uh, this uh, uh, slide shows uh, the real uh, ontology. This is the ontology of uh, adverse events. So we can see the left side is the class hierarchy. Uh, we can see, okay, bodily process, uh, 
uh, process. So those occur and then continue. They are from the basic formal ontology. Later on, I may have time to give a little bit more uh, introduction. Uh, but basically, it groups all the ontology together. And then uh, we have the right side. We have the annotations. So we can have label or definition. We can also cross-reference to other uh, other control technology systems or databases or, or, or other ontology systems. And then we can uh, have the so-called axioms. So axioms basically uh, defines relations, like for example the rash, AE, you can define that as a uh, subclass of scheme AE. It's basically is a relation, or you can define more complicated one. You can say, okay, uh, this rash AE occurs in some uh, scheme of body. The ontology can also support the computer asserted reasoning. So there are two types of uh, ontology for, uh, forms, formats. So one we call it uh, asserted hierarchy, so, and one is called the inferred hierarchy. So asserted hierarchy is basically asserted by ontology developers or editors. So for example, you say, okay, I have a healer cell, I asserted it as uh, immortal human, uterine, cervicus derived, the epithelium, cell line cell, and then you can go up and up. And then you can define the, the, some axioms, like, okay, it's uh, uh, derived from epithelium, is part of uh, uterine, cervicus, and this one is part of human, uh, homo sapiens, you know, who has disease, or who has an cardiac normal. And then you have a, 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 a Infer the hierarchy, so basically by using some computer reasoning, so you can infer something extra. So in this case, now healer cell uh, may become something extra, and then um, so the, so for example, in here we have uh, many other things. We have something called the immortal human uh, uterine cervix derived epithelia. So and uh, and we have others. So basically, yeah, we can do reasoning. And then uh, ontology differs from control terminology. For example, measure is uh, 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 a traditional control terminology used for adverse event representation. So uh, to, dif to differ ontology from control terminology, usually we say uh, ontology has more regional types and has class instances, properties, and can support reasoning. But a control terminology basically only has, has an each relation, so it's quite simple. So uh, everything uh, bottom is uh, the parent term, but sometimes uh, it can be confusing uh, because of the uh, applications they have, they probably don't worry too much about other things. So it's relatively loose. So ontology is modern day, new generation, but it has more applications. And ontology can also uh, support uh, uh, knowledge base development it itself can be used as a knowledge base. So basically, knowledge base means you, you have knowledge inside this ontology. So let's say, for example, if we are looking for a uh, paper document, it can contain some knowledge, but a paper cannot be queried. Or if you are looking for a relational database, it works very well, it can store knowledge, but uh, it's, it works well in local server or for people to query from browser but they, uh, it's harder for outside the computers to to read the, the data. So ontology uh, basically uh, can be shared uh, everywhere, so it has uh, some advantages uh, than a uh, paper or original database in, in serving as a larger base. So for example here, let's say we have some paper document from the FDA uh, adverse event, adverse reaction, uh, from the FDA drug, uh, package inserts, so you can see, okay, now we have uh, everywhere is uh, influenza uh, vaccine, it can induce the different uh, like pain from different ages. And then now we can represent the knowledge using uh, so some axioms. Let's say, okay, we, you have a different uh, age, and then you have different pain. So you, you can represent those. The, the, the content is the same, although maybe the ontology is more complicated However, once you do, you do once, the record is saved, and the people 
can you reuse it. What you do with all the uh, vaccines, like 100 vaccines, then now you can query, uh, you can query all those information and say, oh, what are the top vaccines with the most adverse events? You can query those information without the problem. And ontology can also be used as a data or metadata standard. So metadata is uh, basically data about data. And ontology can be used to represent metadata. Uh, for example, uh, there's a paper uh, from PLOS One which is to use OB, which is uh, ontology for biomedical investigations to represent uh, uh, human pathogen or vector genome sequences. So they can represent those uh, information in a very clever way so that the metadata now uh, can be more like a, a ontology uh, format and then the relations among uh, those terms in the metadata can be better understood. And then we think, I think ontology also supports linked data. So basically linked data is to link different data sets or knowledge using uh, URI or RDF. So this is a typical linked data. If you click the link the data.org, you can see something like this one. So initially, when you only have a couple of linked data storage, it's fine, right? But when you have hundreds, now each linked data becomes uh, uh, its silo, its islands itself. So in the end, it's still quite messy. Uh, also, linked data does usually have some ontology there, but the ontology is not integrated. So my one solution can be, oh, maybe we should have some integrated uh, ontology. So then every uh, linked data or databases can be uh, mapped to the OBU foundry ontologies, and then now we can solve the problem of data uh, disintegration. So what is OBU? Uh, so OBU foundry basically is open biological and the biomedical ontology foundry. The goal is to establish a set of principles for ontology development in order to create a suite of interoperable and non-redundant ontologies in the biological and the biomedical domain. Uh, there are many principles, but two principles are like the most. One is open, one is collaboration. That means all the ontologies should be open. We should not charge for anything, even for commercial use. Another uh, principle is collaboration. So all the team, all the community working together so we can improve it and then eventually make your ontology become more like a community supported uh, to support community applications. So for now we have more than 160 ontologies in OBO foundry uh, system and we have more we have millions of trends. So one most one famous one is gene ontology. So G GO is also an OBO ontology. So we know uh, gene ontology has been used for uh, for the for gene enrichment and the ontology can also be used for many other things like visual mining and for data exchange, data integration. So basically this is some background about ontology. And next uh, I want to introduce uh, how we initially developed the, the cellular ontology. So as we know, we all know uh, in our uh, yeah, in, in, you know, in this group, uh, cell lines are very critical to biomedical uh, research. So it has been uh, there for uh, uh, one century. And uh, now uh, we have thousands of cell lines available. And if you're looking for cell, to PubMed for literature data, you can find uh, a million papers uh, related to various cell lines. So then uh, a group of uh, researchers, uh, including us, have been thinking we should standardize cell lines. And uh, uh, this collaboration, including uh, Sarah, uh, was my previous uh, uh, PhD student, uh, also commented by Dr. Uh, Brian Avery in Michigan. And uh, then uh, she was working with me directly, and then we have been working together with many other uh, groups uh, to develop the cell ontology, and uh, we also have uh, EBI, and actually Sarah now is working at the EBI, 
Uh, she worked at the FDA for a couple of years, and then she's now at the EBI. And we have with OB and the Cell Oncology Group and the University of Miami, uh, Stephen School. And we have Japan, Raikan Institute, and many, many other groups and ontologies. And we have used the four main sources of cell lines. One is ATCC, one is the Korea. Korea was initially uh, used primarily by EBI, and then later was uh, uh, incorporated into cell ontology as well. And we have Cyber uh, CLDB and uh, Raikan Cell Bank. And then we have been struggling actually for for a long time because different uh, groups and people have different opinion about uh, how to define uh, different terms like uh, what is cell line. Uh, some people say oh cell line is a lineage or some people say cell line is is a, is a kind of culture or some people say cell line is population. And then eventually we say uh, based on our actually several months of discussion we think uh, cell line is uh, uh, genetically stable and the homogeneous population of cultured cells that shares a common propagation history and then basically cell and cell is basically a unit or a, a cultured cell that is part of the cell line. So we once we agree on this one everything actually becomes quite easier then because uh, for ontology development we often focus on the top design and then uh, so for cell line ontology, uh, we actually focus on the cell line cell uh, instead of focus on population. So, so, so when we say healer, we, we, in cell line ontology, we, like, uh, uh, by default, it's a healer cell line cell is a cell. So then we can align to the cell type. And then uh, this one is aligned with the buffer, which is the basic formal ontology. So basically, buffer you know, has been used uh, quite often in OBO. It has been uh, used uh, for more than 100 ontologies. So basically, the buffer uh, has the top level entity and includes two branches. One is a continuum branch, one is a current branch. So I usually think of buffer like uh, you are working on uh, representing the world with the 4D structure. So the 3D is the continuum. So basically, it's like uh, the space, so material, and uh, uh, the quality, all those uh, things associated with material. And then the current is everything associated with time and process. So the 3D plus 4D times is the, the other D. And then, like the material entity is, of course, a continuum. And then material entity in, includes cell, cell is material entity. And then we have the cell in vitro, culture cell. So cell line cell is a culture cell. And cell line cell has the immortal cell line cell, and immortal cell line cell. And uh, the cell line cell you know, uh, basically uh, is a green of the cell line. And then uh, the uh, cell line cell can come from different uh, depository uh, and can be for different organisms. So basically you are by doing this, you are integrating different uh, topics together. And in terms of the occurrence, you have planned cell line, planned process, so you can do the cell line culturing. So you can modify, you can do uh, culture and fashion, you can change the new cell lines. So this is the uh, top level structure and the key terms. And then this is the cell line ontology design pattern. So basically you have uh, uh, you have a cell line from some repository, and you can do uh, cell line modification. So basically, you do the this process. You have the uh, transfection. Uh, you can have modification. And then the, each cell line has uh, can have instances and its features like uh, SG profile and other things. And then we can define healer cell using exosians uh, like this one. It derives from epithelial cell, part of uh, uterine and uh, part of Homo sapiens. Uh, this is an example of the MCF 10A cell line cells. So uh, uh, this is uh, shown in the so-called OntoB uh, website, uh, uh, which is the default link data server for the, ont for the cell ontology. So in here, we can see the hierarchy clearly, and we can see different uh, exigence 
okay, I could define the relations between this cell and with other things. And then we can also see if the cross reference to other databases like ATCC or, uh, or other information. And then we have uh, the link, the data ID, link, uh, the link's ID as well. And that's our specified annotation item. And then now we have over 38,000 cell lines. It's a lot. And uh, we also have the NCBI taxonomy for organisms. So you know uh, it's from human, mouse, or, or other organisms. We have the Uberon. It's basically for the anatomical entities, like from bone, from skin, from other area. And we have disease ontology. So basically you can see, OK, this cell line coming from a patient who has some disease. And then we have the cell, cell type ontologies. CL and many others. And this is just one example about how cell ontology can be used to model cell vaccine pathogen interactions. So we have the raw 264.7 cells. It's a marker for your cell line cell. And then these cells can have different expression, growth, and bacterial survival. And then you can do different experiments. You can have uh, treatment. Uh, in this case, it's a vaccine. RB31 is a vaccine. It's actually one uh, vaccine that my, my well lab uh, uh, has been doing a lot. So we use this model to represent how the cell lines can be used to interact with the different uh, uh, agents, like the drug accumulation or stress for stress and other things. And then you can put all the things together. So this is the cell line ontology uh, development, uh, um, general development history. And now let's go for the links. So yeah, we are a links webinar. So we all know what a links is. So the, yeah, yeah, links is a library of network based cellular signatures. So we have been focusing on cellular a lot. So uh, for the cellular signature in your cell and the cell lines, have been quite a, uh, frequently used you know, and uh, treated with uh, different uh, formulations, drugs. Then you can look for the uh, uh, cell responses and you can look for signatures. You can have a network and you can have a library. So you have a lot of data there. So in, in the end, how cell ontology can help? And it appears cell, line, cell lines are important. So. Uh, yeah, I come here to present. Uh, yeah, one major reason is because yeah, we we were recently funded by Links, an external data science research project. The title is Ontology Based Cell Line Standardization Integration and Links Application. So we have three aims. So one is to leverage cell line ontology consortium to discuss and standardize cell line information, and we have been working on it for years, and we are still working on this aim one now. And then we're trying to develop a stem cell line uh, bank, stem cell line cell uh, branch in, in cell ontology now. And then the aim too is to is expand the cell line ontology to cover and analyze the link cell lines. This is the aim I'm working on and we are presenting. And then the aim three is that the future work uh, will be in my last section, uh, how to analyze the cell responses. And we have been working with uh, Staff and Shadows group at the uh, University of Miami a lot uh, on the AIM-2. Okay, so let's see. Uh, if you go to the Linkus data portal, you can find a lot of uh, data there. You can find more than 1,000 uh, cell lines there. And uh, so we have been working on, on this and also looking for other resources. And uh, one is the uh, Campbell from uh, EBI, EBI. So basically, we compare our cell ontology data with the Linux data portal and the, and the Campbell, and we found a uh, lot of uh, we found there's some uh, information that are uh, that is not available in cell ontology, and but it may be quite be quite be is quite useful for for Linux. So we're trying to basically integrate it all together, and then we're trying to add more information to support the link's uh, uh, tasks. 
So what we do is like uh, we basically get all the data and uh, we we do some analysis and we uh, do the kind of which cell lines are there, which are not, and also looking for attributes like what uh, uh, like uh, annotations we are missing or, or, or we don't missing. And then we put them into Excel format and then we basically have some pipeline to uh, put them together and then we think uh, we can eventually generate a subset of cell ontology. We call it a, a link cell ontology view and then we can do more analysis. So I'm going to present uh, some results of, of, of our work. Uh, so first, uh, from the link so data portal, we found the 1097 uh, link cell lines. And at that time, 794 can be directly uh, mapped to cell ontology. And the 466 had a Campbell IDs. So yeah, eventually there's some, some missing, some gap there. And so and also not only the numbers but also some attributes. So like the the link's ID and the, some IDs uh, are missing in original uh, uh, clone. So and then we, we basically get the information and, and then add it to cell ontology. And then well, some cell lines may also have uh, missing information in terms of organ, organism, disease, cell type, and then we basically put it all together. I think that our system works fine now. And then we also added a, a, a new relation um, called derived originally from patient with disease. So uh, because before we have a long, this is long from the cell line to the disease. It's very long. You have to go through the long process to come to a disease. And then we think, oh, we should have something called a shortcut relation. So you don't have to go through this far in just one relation. Then you can quickly come to the disease. So we think it's a, it's a nice feature. And then um, eventually we put it all together and we have uh, the link cell line ontology view, link link clone view. And it's also deposited in the uh, on top beam uh, as a link. So uh, why we both do it? Because the uh, uh, clone is too big. It's like uh, more than 40,000 uh, uh, turns. So a lot of things you don't need for for link's purpose. So we have the simple the subset. Everything is for link. Everything somehow is, is related to link's project. So we think it's cool and we can use it directly for different applications. So uh, for this subset we have uh, 1,828 classes, 25 uh, relations, we have many other things. So this is just one hierarchy example to show uh, uh, this information. And then you can also do some que uh, Sparkle query. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, it requires uh, some uh, learning curve, but the ones you learn is quite useful. So you can have a few lines you can query uh, like how many cell line turns in, in, in the subset. So you can see, oh yeah, now we have more than 1,000 uh, yeah, cell, cell line turns in the link cell line ontology subset. And now uh, let's uh, come to the key point. Oh really, how you can do? It's only the cell line hierarchy or something else. So like, uh, here is one example. Uh, we can uh, looking, we can look at the disease uh, hierarchy. So the numbers means how many cell lines have been directly linked to those disease. Like eight uh, cell lines have been directly linked to cervical carcinoma, and the 19 directly linked to cervical adrenal carcinoma, and the four. So basically, uh, cell line cell lines uh, are linked to different diseases. They can be the different hierarchies, not, not uh, just uh, automatically go to the bottom hierarchy, bottom level, so it can be different hierarchies. Uh, by doing it, uh, it can actually support a lot of, like, in terms of query analysis. So for example, if you want to look for all the cell lines associated uh, with uh, uh, cervical carcinoma, just give a quick example. 
So if you just use exact match, you only get eight, right? And uh, so, so you may, if you use cell ontology, you can find, uh, oh yeah, it's not only eight, it's eight plus nineteen plus four, right? So, so, so you you have more, but of course for this one, human can read quickly. Uh, for computer, certain computer is stupid. You have to let them know what what to to do. They, they just do what you ask them to do. And the cell ontology basically provide a, a very good way for computer to understand. Otherwise, if you want to use the same information, you have to hard code or put it into regional database in a very hard way. But the ontology can provide you with a simple way so you can quickly know oh how many cell lines cell lines are associated with cervical carcinoma. This is just one example. So let's see what about the tissues and the organs. So tissues and organs we use Ubron is an ontology, it's a, a species neutral ontology for anatomic locations. So if you look for all the linked cell lines, uh, you can find uh, 131 tissue organs. So here is just one example. So uterine cervicus is at this structure. And the plus means there, there is more under it. The, the just hyphen means just the bottom line uh, in the uh, slide. So you can, you can get more information, you can explore it. Okay, so what about the uh, uh, telosomy? So for over uh, for the over 1,000 uh, cell lines, we only find the human and the mouse uh, 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 derived cell lines, no other uh, organisms. And uh, you can uh, also look for the cell type. So what about cell type? Cell type, we have 43 cell, uh, cell types. So uh, this to use the cell type ontologies uh, uh, turns and we also actually align with their structure. So our cell line, uh, cell ontology hierarchy structure aligned with the cell type structure very well. And you can find out oh, how many you can see okay how many cell lines associated with the peripheral neuron. You can quite find it quickly. And uh, yeah, clone has been used to support the links. Like for example, this one is uh, from the Harvard. Uh, the, the link is uh, uh, database and uh, they have been using the, the clone ID to, to represent the cell line, the, the MCF 10A and we are also collaborating with the Stephens group and they have more clone based research going on now. Okay, so uh, so uh, basically we think a cell line links uh, can link cell lines can be uh, all represented in cell ontology, and the cell line ontology can uh, link cell lines with uh, disease, organism, and, uh, like uh, anatomic location, uh, and the cell type, and, and different annotations, and cross link to different databases, and it can be queried quickly, and it can be used to provide a different information. So this is the section summary. Okay. Now, uh, let me uh, uh, summarize uh, some future plan for our clone links research. So what to do next? Uh, we have discussed many times because there is a demand to have a stem cell line branch in clone and we have talked many times and eventually we think uh, a stem cell line cell or stem cell line uh, can be aligned with the clone cell line cell and uh, uh, cell line cell line uh, concept very well so we can directly edit stem cell line cell on the cell line in, in clone so it's, it's a good one and uh, we uh, we are also thinking uh, clone and uh, link uh, clone view can be improved uh, to add more information like the cell responses so that we are talking now and uh, so okay Let's see, uh, Lingus is about a uh, uh, cellular signature network. So, and our aim three in our uh, project also is about the cell line responses. So this cell responses actually is quite uh, complex. So the question is how cell line ontology can support, can be used possibly as a hub. Uh, that's a hard question. And we have been thinking also 
uh, have we have some uh, model to to address this issue, and also I want to provide uh, some uh, information about a uh, theory that I have been developing. Uh, I hope the theory can be used to clean up uh, and uh, to straight out uh, the story. So uh, let's see. I just give a quick uh, summary. So okay, let's see. We have uh, thousands of cell lines, uh, different cell lines are, are working different ways. So if you think uh, cell lines is, is light, right? So if you think, uh, let's say, a picture of an elephant, so you may think, oh yeah, it's very hard to, to describe an uh, elephant. Well, how about a cell line? Cell is also very hard to dis describe a cell line. So how can we possibly have a comprehensive and integrative picture about uh, cells? Or, or, or even go go further, like uh, tissues, organs, and uh, an organism. So the theory I've been talking about is uh, is uh, something called a uh, one net theory of life. So uh, uh, this theory basically states that the whole process of life of an organism is a single complex and a dynamic uh, network. So basically, it's called one net. So one net has uh, uh, different features. Uh, one net blueprint. Is stored. It's, it's the genetics, basically stored in organism genotype. So the genotype store, tells you how the the cell, how the organism can develop. So when the one net starts, so we think that the one net starts when the first cell, like uh, the fertilizer cell, forms in human. So the motivation. So one net basically is motivated to survive, develop, replicate whenever possible, when ready and uh, live a high quality of life. So, uh, you know, the quality of life actually, you know, has a lot of content that we can, we can discuss later. And then the dynamics is genotype, environment, time, and then we have a phenotype. So the, the phenotype basically uh, can be hidden, can have the information in the genotype and the environment. And then the effectiveness basically is the adaptiveness determines uh, all the uh, outcomes. So it's uh, very dry, actually, and every, every item is quite uh, uh, quite easy to understand, I think. So how can we use it if a theory cannot have application, it's not a good theory? So let's say uh, I'm trying to hypothesize uh, based on this uh, uh, one-net theory, so something I call the blueprint manifestations hypothesis. So basically what it means is one organism uses one genotype rooted a single comprehensive mechanism to respond to all phenomena, and then stimulus specific mechanisms are manifestations of the comprehensive one uh, print many uh, mechanism. So yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, hard to understand. So then we have the Christmas light model. So basically, this is the some lights that yeah my 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 house use. So you can see okay. Uh, there is the hardware. You can switch. You can switch uh, the button, and then you can see different profiles, like uh, light steady on, or light uh, twinkle light. You know, when the button is here. So what it means is, is likely there are some common mechanisms there. What we see is a phenotype. Is basically, is is not like a too dramatic. It's, 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 you have different mechanism. Maybe just a single one mechanism. So then, the, just different different the trigger can can trigger the, how it goes, and then you can see the phenotype. So basically, yeah, I don't know if it's hard to say or not, but it's something I'm kind of imagine. So if we uh, use this kind of uh, information, we can probably have some cell line hypothesis. So uh, one cell line uh, uses one genotype root in a single comprehensive blueprint that responds to different uh, stimuli. Basically, you have something central. You have the same blueprint mechanism there based on different treatments like a drug, vaccine, pathogens. They are all working on the same mechanism, and then eventually you, you are dealing with one mechanism instead of many different mechanisms. So hopefully, this way, can, basically, we can make the story a little bit simpler, and uh, we are focusing on the shared mechanism instead of looking for different ones because then they are disintegrated. So 
by doing it, we can hopefully to integrate all the pieces together to look at them in, in the integrated way instead of disintegrated way. So we think uh, then uh, we can use ontology to represent uh, this kind of mechanism. If possible, if you have a, a comprehensive mechanism uh, stored in ontology, like a cell ontology, and if you have triggers, you have pathways, you have those runs designed very well, and then you can say, okay, I have a start, and then you go for a different phenotype, like the Chris Moss model, then that would be great. I think uh, it's more like uh, my, my dream uh, kind of uh, uh, pattern that we like to see. So, uh, so basically, I think uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, to summarize uh, the whole uh, presentation, we think ontology can represent standardize and integrate uh, terminologies in the data, in the metadata, and the knowledge. So ontology can be used for many things, we think, but it's just beginning, I think. And on price development is just uh, emerging, just beginning. It can be uh, can can be further progressed for for many many decades, I think. And the ontology can cell ontology represents cell lines and really forms really information. And the link cell line view supports link cell line study. And I want to uh, acknowledge uh, many people uh, in my group and also in. Michigan, uh, like Sarah, Asia, Rebecca, Edison. Edison now is a PhD student uh, in bioinformatics working with me closely with the, the, the Linux project. I also like to uh, really appreciate uh, Stefan's uh, collaboration. And uh, we have been closely working with Stefan and uh, his group members, uh, including Katie uh, and uh, uh, very real handy woman, and the more uh, cellular ontology collectors around the world, like cell type ontology, EBI, Japan, uh, region uh, re ontology, OB, and OBO. Yeah, that's uh, that's it for me for for the talk. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. So this is uh, John Riker with Mario's group. Um, just a quick question. In your ontology, do you uh, intend at any point to capture like mutations and other uh, cell line uh, specific or cell type specific uh, uh, differences uh, between these cells? Yeah, that's a very good question. Question. Yeah, I think uh, yes. The, the answer is yes. Uh, we like to uh, represent uh, mutations and uh, many other information. I think. And, uh, 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 go further, like uh, for example, uh, how a new cell line is uh, generated. Uh, for example, uh, a cell line may be derived from another cell line by co-chains uh, action with uh, uh, some plasmid, uh, which uh, uh, probably uh, in, encodes for some gene or protein. So you you can basically have uh, your, your new cell line with additional proteins there. So this is a kind of addition, right? But sometimes uh, the cell line may be uh, generated, uh, you know, with some gene mutated. So this is more like uh, how a new cell line is generated uh, with uh, deletion or, or, or expressing some gene. And uh, so this is one aspect. Another aspect I want to say is like, uh, Okay, so you have uh, tumor cell line, for example. So the tumor cell line may be uh, com compared to the parent, to a normal cell line. So you may have some special feature. So, uh, it, uh, so those feature is not, uh, probably sometimes it's not known. Some may be known, and uh, some may, be, may also be figured out by doing um, uh, like a data analysis. So it means no, nobody knows the information now, but uh, if we can uh, do it, then we can include information into cell line ontology for the specific cell. We think that this is why I'm thinking the clone can be used as a hub. Basically, they can link all the things and represent the information in an ontological, semantical way. 
and it can be shared by, by the whole community. Um, from Joe Grace, I have a question. Are you aware about uh, Cellosaurus? I don't know if this is an ontology, but I figured out when I was dealing with cell lines that I found there quite comprehensive information about every cell line I've used. Um, sometimes more comprehensive than what I found on ATCC or DMS set or so. Thank you, yeah. So you are talk, you are, you are, you are also talking about like cell, cell, cell integration? Uh, no, yeah. um, maybe I can write in the, in the chat. It's um, cellosaurus.org. It's a web resource that I, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's an ontology, but it have quite comprehensive information about cell lines. It's cellosaurus, oh. like a dinosaur. Cellosaurus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see your point. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, cellosaurus. Yeah, I think I also. Yeah, we have. Uh, yeah, we also have some link there. So that one is. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's more like a, a database. Right. It has more information. Um, yeah, but. Uh, this is uh, more like a database. Then yeah, maybe. it's more like a database. Data resources. So. Uh, yeah, but it, it uh, it's not a uh, uh, represented in a way in an ontological way. So, but sometimes you know, it's uh, it's not uh, easy to or, or or intuitive to represent in ontology. So we have to basically have some design pattern, and uh, also possibly ask the, the community uh, say, okay, is this pattern uh, valid? And then we, maybe we can talk them, and we can represent the additional information in in in, in cellular ontology, but with a more consistent uh, ontological way. So, yeah, and, and or, or usually, usually cell, the clone is not focused on instance data. So we are not a kind of it's not a kind of we want to compete with anyone. We basically. We, it's more focused on the class level. Class level means uh, the, the kind of the knowledge or the, the known information, like you know the, the healer cell or, or the MCF 10A. So, so we, we are looking, we are more focused on that one. We can link uh, to different uh, uh, experimental data or if we can get uh, to do analysis, get uh, Good, uh, like uh, uh, verify data, like uh, then it becomes more like a knowledge. Then we would like to hopefully with some design pattern developed, uh, included clone. So basically, clone can be. It's more like I'm thinking. It's more like a, a snowball. So initially, it can be snow, but it can be small. But we want to do it good. We don't want to just have too much information, but uh, it's everywhere. So we want to basically, uh, you know, to have a, a small snowball and uh, well designed, and then we can slowly let the, the snowballs, uh, you know, roll, roll down, and uh, then eventually become bigger and bigger and uh, more and more useful. So yeah, I think that's uh, yeah. We, we know yeah, the clone still has some information we like to to catch, but sometimes just too much and. Uh, Actually, by working with links, you know, it gives us a very good opportunity because rather than working on thousands of, you know, like tens of thousands, forty thousand cell lines, you know, we now work on only about one one thousand cell line. It's much easier, and then we have the links, the huge community, a lot of data. So we think we are very fortunate that to to join links, and then we can trying to do more and with Linux use cases and hopefully uh, we, we can have more to to present uh, in the future. Okay, if there are no more questions. Uh, I would like to thank again Oliver for a great presentation. Uh, we recorded this one and it will be available at the usual place from the CIC website. Thank you all for attending.